Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about four players that you're going to want your dumb league mates to draft in 2024 fantasy football. But before we get on in depth into these four players that you guys should not be drafting in 2024 fantasy football, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying, they please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure they do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at Notorious FNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into Four players to light your dumb league mates draft in 2024 fantasy football. We begin with my first player to let your dumb league mates draft, and that is going to be Debo Samuel, wide receiver of the San Francisco 49ers, current underdog ADP wide receiver 15 at pick 21. Point one. Now, I want to make it abundantly clear that I do not believe that Debo Samuel is a bad player. I think that Debo Samuel is a very solid NFL wide receiver. He is a great athlete out in space. He can make guys miss. This is a guy that a couple of years ago we're talking about as this Swiss Army knife. He can run the rock. He can catch the rock. And he was, in 2021, looking to potentially stake his spot as one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League. And it really looked like after that 2021 season that Debo Samuel was going to be on top of the mountain Kilimanjaro as one of the upper echelon wide receivers in the NFL. Now, ever since 2021, he hasn't magically fallen off the edge of the earth in terms of his ability. He hasn't gotten any worse. But the thing for Debo Samuel is ever since Christian McCaffrey showed up, the amount of touches that Debo Samuel was able to acquire game in and game out was essentially stabbed in the behind by Mr. Christian McCaffrey. In 2021, the season we've been talking about where Debo Samuel is downright unstoppable. He got 59 carries for 365 yards and eight total touchdowns. In 2022, that's when we see Christian McCaffrey on the 49ers. 42 carries for 232 yards and three touchdowns for Debo. Now, obviously, those aren't numbers to scoff at. Obviously, that helps out Debo Samuel game in and game out, getting those carries, getting those potential additional touchdowns. But there is a stark difference between eight touchdowns rushing and three touchdowns rushing while also dipping in carries. And then in 2023, we see a further dip in terms of carries. 37 carries for 225 yards and five touchdowns. Again, I still do strongly believe that Debo Samuel is a very talented wide receiver. And it's very weird to think about it because Debo Samuel is technically in the perfect situation for a lot of things, right? For instance, the offensive line is solid. He's got an amazing head coach in Kyle Shanahan, and Brock Purdy is more than capable of getting the ball into the hands of Debo Samuel. The problem is that Christian McCaffrey is one of the best running backs all around, right? He is great at catching the ball as well as rushing the ball, and that hurts Debo Samuel. It not only takes away carries, but it also takes away targets. They also have a wide receiver. You might have heard of him, Brandon Ayuk, who I think is a better all-around wide receiver than Debo Samuel. And they also have a tight end who is known for laying down some pancakes like he works at Denny's or IHOP in George Kittle. But that's a guy that any given game could drop his nuts in the mouth of the defense and get 100 plus yards and two plus touchdowns, right? George Kittle is legit. So while he has a solid quarterback, while he has a solid offensive line, while he has a great offensive play call caller in Kyle Shanahan, the dagger in the back from Christian McCaffrey, the fact that Ayuk is going to out target him, the fact that they have George Kittle is just kind of a recipe for disaster. For Debo Samuel. Again, 
This is a guy that was the wide receiver 15 in PPR last year, 13 in PPR points per game. I figure he's going to finish around where you draft him as the wide receiver 15. I just don't really see him laying down the marker, having that huge top five season because of all of the weapons they have in San Francisco. Assuming that Christian McCaffrey plays for a majority of the season, assuming that Brandon Ayuk plays for a majority of the season, George Kittle, then you are going to end up disappointed with Debo Samuel, 15 games played last year, ranking 44th in targets, 39th in receptions, 32nd in receiving yards. Sure, fourth in total touchdowns with 12. He has 37 rushes for 225 yards. And again, he's a very solid player. Eighth in terms of target separation, 10th in yards per target, 27th in yards per reception, seventh in true catch rate. But if you look at the numbers last season, Debo Samuel is incredibly hot or cold. And when you're drafting him inside of the second round, I want a little bit more consistency out of that player. Simple as that. One of Debo's biggest games last season came in week three up against the Giants. You want to know who wasn't playing in week three? Brandon Ayuk. So he starts off the season with 11 points, then 22, 25, then 0.6, then 11, 11 again. 15, 9, 22, 35, 34, 21, 9, 18, 5. Debo Samuel has incredible upside game in and game out, but when McCaffrey, Ayuk, Kittle, all these guys around him are healthy, it severely damages his upside of being that top five guy. And when I draft a wide receiver inside of the top 18, I want to paint myself Picasso style, Bob Ross style, a legitimate story about how they could become the top five wide receiver, right? That league winning wide receiver. And Debo Samuel's story involves multiple injuries to his teammates for him to really dominate. So Debo Samuel, while I do like the player in this situation, I am staying away. At number two, we got Devontae Smith of the Philadelphia Eagles, underdog ADP, wide receiver 19 at pick 27.9. Last year was the wide receiver 19 in PPR and 21 in PPR points per game, tied with his former Alabama teammate, Jalen Waddle away, Waddle Waddle. 16 games last year for Devontae Smith, 112 targets, seven per game, ranking 23. 81 receptions, 5.1 per game, 16th, 1,066 receiving yards, 66.6 per game, getting a little bit spooky there, 20th at wide receiver, and 7 total touchdowns, 18th. Debo Samuel is another guy that is kind of kicked in the cojones by the weapons around him, and... When I say weapons, I really mean one weapon. And this is a fucking grenade launcher, a noob tube, one-man army from Modern Warfare 2. This is a machine gun. This is a tank. And that is A.J. Brown. That is the weapon that Devontae Smith is competing with. And I am definitely someone that doesn't like to shit on Jalen Hurts' passing ability and thinks that the fact that a lot of people are like, oh my God, he's a tush-push merchant, this, that, and the other thing. He kind of is, right, in a way, but he's a much better passer than people give him credit for. It's the same thing with basically all the Russian quarterbacks. Like, oh my God, Lamar Jackson can't throw the ball or Kyler Murray can't throw the ball, right? They all kind of just get this stupid narrative around them because they're great at running the ball. So I don't really think Jalen Hurts plays much of a factor in what could be the downfall of Devontae Smith. I just think it's the fact that we know A.J. Brown is going to command a shit ton of targets game in and game out. And when you are not very efficient like Devontae Smith, if you're not seeing that colossal workload, you're going to end up sleeping with the fishes like Luca Brazzi, okay? 67th in route win rate, 44.9% of the time he's winning his route. 45th in target separation, which is surprisingly low for someone that is as fast as the Slim Reaper. 19th in yards per target, 44th in yards per reception. Just like Debo Samuel, this is not meant to be a hit piece on Devontae Smith. I think Devontae Smith is a talented player. I think if you take A.J. Brown out of this equation, shoot him on a cannon or inside of a cannon back to Tennessee or to some other fucking team, then guess what? We are basically chortling the balls of Devontae Smith. 
because he's the wide receiver one on the fucking Eagles and he's going to get a lot of targets. Problem is, that is not the world we live in. We live in a world where he's the number two behind A.J. Brown on a team with now Saquon Barkley with a running quarterback in Jalen Hurts, a team that is going to want to churn the rock. They're going to want to jam the ball down the defense's throat. And in the third round, I can not pull the trigger on Devontae Smith. Now, just like Debo Samuel, I don't really think Devontae Smith will end up as a humongous bust, right? I don't feel like he is going to completely destroy your team because I figure he finishes around wide receiver 19. But I don't really see that league winning upside in such a run heavy offense with AJ Brown there and now adding in Saquon Barkley, who's going to be getting a lot of targets as well. So again, I like Devontae Smith, the player, but as the wide receiver 19, if he finishes the wide receiver 17, you weren't really that happy about your pick. You just kind of felt meh, right? If he finishes the wide receiver 22, you probably also feel meh, but you're like, fuck, I probably shouldn't have drafted him as the wide receiver 19. Again, I like Devontae Smith, but in this situation in Philadelphia, I will be staying away this season. At number three, we got Xavier Worthy, wide receiver of the Kansas City Chiefs, underdog ADP, wide receiver 35 at pick 61.4. Now this dude runs at fucking the speed of light, at warp speed, mock speed, whatever happens when they're in the, what is that ship called? Obi-Wan, not Obi-Wan ship, Han Solo's ship, you know what I'm talking about? And they hit it, and the stars start moving, and they enter warp speed, or whatever the fuck it's called, right? Okay? That, the Millennium Falcon, when they're in there, and they can enter Mach 12 gazillion, right? That is how fast Xavier Worthy runs. He runs quicker than Usain Bolt. He doesn't actually, but he's got that Lightning McQueen speed, right? This guy is amazing at running, right? We have seen that work in the NFL, Tyreek Hill. We've seen it not work, John Ross. Now, am I saying that Xavier Worthy is John Ross? The answer to that would be, fuck no, baby. I don't think that Xavier Worthy is going to be a colossal, monumental, a complete and utter disaster of a pick like John Ross was for the Cincinnati Bengals when they paid a pity, a pretty penny to draft him all those years ago. I don't necessarily think Xavier Worthy will be a bust. But I think as the wide receiver 35 at pick 61.4, we are getting incredibly greedy. Look, Rashi Rice might be playing with the jailbirds, doing the jailhouse rock with Elvis, right? He might be playing in a fucking orange jumpsuit this season. He won't actually. He's going to get suspended a couple of games. We don't know how many games that is going to be. This is a team that just brought in Hollywood Brown. They have Travis Kelsey, and Pacheco can catch passes. Patrick Mahomes notoriously loves to throw the ball to everyone. He's like Oprah Winfrey. You get the ball, you get the ball, you all get the ball. So while Xavier Worthy is going to have games where he puts the defense in a fucking figure four, where he puts the defense into the camel clutch, right, where he has a huge game, that should not be surprising to anyone. And I get if you're just hunting for pure upside, go ahead and take Xavier Worthy because he has that. But as the wide receiver 35, when there are other players that are going later with similar upside and his teammate Rashi Rice, while I'm not in love with drafting him, Rashi Rice will probably be suspended a couple of games. I think he is going to outscore Xavier Worthy. So while I think Xavier Worthy is an incredibly exciting player, while it's going to be awesome when you're... You're watching Red Zone, and magically, Scott Hansen's like, oh, we're going to Kansas City. And then you see Mahomes throw a fucking missile, a heat-seeking missile. And it's 45 yards down the field. There's no one around Xavier Worthy. Touchdown. Fucking hold my dick. Fucking Marshawn Lynch style. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. But is it worth wide receiver 35 at pick 61.4? I don't think so. Again, he's incredibly fast. 100th percentile 40-yard dash, 4.21. 77th speed score, 96th burst score, 91st catch radius. He is faster than OJ Simpson running away from the cops, okay? 
He's going to be fun to watch. But at pick 61.4, wide receiver 35. Come on, man. Last year at Texas, 20 years old, 14 games played, 75 receptions, 121 targets, 1,014 yards. Five total touchdowns, 13.5 yards per reception. Again, this is a solid player on a great offense. But Mahomes loves to spread out the wealth. He loves to throw the ball to everyone. And Rashi Rice, while he's going to get suspended, what happens if it's just three games? Xavier Worthy going to have such good three games that it's worth it for the rest of the season? I don't really think so. In best ball, sure, I get it because the upside. But in redraft, I don't really want to be going near Xavier Worthy. Speaking of best ball, if you guys want to be doing some best ball drafts, make sure you guys check out Underdog Fantasy. Link in the video description on your screen right now. You guys can claim your special pick plus up to $250 if you are a first-time depositor using promo code NOTORIOUS or clicking down the link in the video description. If you have a gambling problem, please make sure that you call 1-800-GAMBLER. So now we will move to the fourth player to let your dumb league mates draft, and that is going to be David Ninjoku. Now, David Ninjoku was a league winner last season. David Ninjoku emerged from... Kind of a shit show Brown situation last year. He emerged from the flames. Literally. He literally burned his face. Came out and balled. A lot of respect for David Njoku. I like David Njoku. But let's make one thing clear. As the tight end 10 off the board at pick 100. If we look at last season. On paper, right? You don't put anything into context. If you're just looking at the stats. You will trick yourself into David Njoku because he's the tight end six last year in PPR, seven in PPR points per game. Coming off the board is the tight end 10, right? 16 games played, 123 targets. It's as easy as one, two, three, A, B, C, 7.6 per game, third at tight end. He's fifth in receptions, sixth in receiving yards, and second in total touchdowns. Like, holy shit. Holy cannoli. David Njoku, tight end 10? Sign me up, right? Seventh in yards per team pass attempt. Fifth in Dominator rating, eighth in fantasy points per route run, and you are popping a chub below your desk right now. You're thinking, ooh, and oh man, what a steal. Tight end 10. And then you realize that Ninjoku had a 17 game pace of 68 receptions for 598 yards and three touchdowns in the full five games he played with. Sean Watson. So if you pace those five games out to a full season, just 68 receptions, 598 yards, and three total touchdowns. Now, do I think that Deshaun Watson is completely washed? No. Do I think that Deshaun Watson is terrible? No. Do I think that the Browns kind of got the short end of the stick metaphorically with signing Deshaun Watson and all that went through with that? Probably. I think Deshaun Watson's going to be fine this year. But as the tight end 10, and when his pace made him finish well outside of the top 12 at tight end with Deshaun Watts under center, and I know five games is not the biggest sample size, but it's also not the smallest. It's not like he just played one game with Deshaun Watts and shit the bed, and you can just brush it under, you know? Just brush it away. Blow it away. You can't do that. Again, I like David Njoku, but his numbers spiked with cool Joe Flacco under center, he ripped off two 25-plus EPR point performances. Five 15-plus point performance games with cool Joe Flacco. None of that was seen. None of that was even remotely close to happening with Sean Watson. So again, in the situation with Deshaun Watson, now with Jerry Judy there, adding some more weaponry to this arsenal. Let your idiot league mates, let your dumb league mates Draft David and Jokus. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you end up enjoying, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button like it owes you money. Hit it with the one, two Mayweather. Make sure you guys hit that like button as well, whether you are new to the channel or not. It helps me out a ton. Check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. And again, shout out to our sponsor of today's video, the main sponsor of the channel, Underdog Fantasy. Link in the video description, promo code Notorious. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. Check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. Don't remember if I said that. I did. Sorry. Love you guys. Have a great one. We'll be back tomorrow with another banger of video. As always, have a great one. Good boy.